All right, pre-calculus folks. Today we're going to do something that will really start to get you feeling like you're in a calculus class. Okay? Some of the language in this work that we're going to do is the kind of language that we use in a calculus class, but I'm just sort of easing you in. I'm not going to throw calculus at you. I just want your brain to start getting accustomed to some of the problems and the ways that we think in learning calculus. Okay? So here's what I have. This is a pretty simple problem. It may not look simple to you right now, but as I walk you through it, it's going to make complete sense. It says, identify all outputs of the function f of x is equal to x squared minus x plus 5. It's quadratic. It's a parabola. Okay, easy to deal with. Uh, well, it's easy to deal with. You'll catch on. All right, on, all right when you see this, the way you read this is this says on the interval. See, we have x is greater than or equal to 1, but x is also less than or equal to 6. Now, you see something like this, and you might be thinking that the way you read it, based on what you have been taught, maybe in elementary school, through middle school, and into high school, you may think that the way you read this is on 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6, but that is not correct. Here's what's happening. You have an x in the middle of two symbols, and they're the same symbol, and they both look like less than or equal to symbols, and in a way they are both less than or equal to symbols, but actually the way you read these symbols is based on what you say first. If I write this, Yes, I can say that 7 is less than or equal to b, but usually we don't read the number before the letter. We usually read the letter first. So I should be saying instead of 7 is less than or equal to b, I should really be saying b is greater than or equal to 7. So here, instead of saying 1 less than or equal to, b, to x, here I should say x, where x is greater than or equal to 1, and then say also x is less than or equal to 6. Well, if x is greater than or equal to 1, and if x is less than or equal to 6, that means that x is some number between 1 and 6. And so that's the way you can read this. Instead of saying, instead of, or instead of reading on x is greater than or equal to 1, x is less than or equal to 6, you could just say on the interval, on the interval, we'll just say the interval, on the interval where x is greater than or equal to 1 but less than or equal to 6. So we're talking about a closed interval here because we have the or equal to on both sides. It's a closed interval and it's a limited interval where the smallest value is 1 and the largest value is 6. That's how we read that. Okay, so let's start over again. Identify all outputs of f of x, where f of x is equal to x squared minus x plus 5, on the interval where x is between 1, greater than or, or excuse me, x is between 1 and 6 inclusive, which means inclusive means including 1 and 6, where See this? That's the, that's the Greek letter delta, delta x. And when we write this little triangle with an x, we, that means delta x. But the way we read it is change in x, where the change in x is equal to 1. So anytime in math where you see an interval and you're told that the change in x is equal to a value, what that basically means is that you should start with the smallest number and then count up by this number here. So here, if we start at 1, we've got 1, then go up by 1 at a time. Well, what's 1 plus 1? 2. And what's 2 plus 1? 3. And what's 3 plus 1? 4. And what's 4 plus 1? 5. And 5 plus 1 is 6. And we're going to stop at 6. Why are we going to stop at 6? 
because x is on the interval between 1 and 6, including 1 and 6. And since the delta x is 1, since the change in x is 1, we only care about all the numbers of x that are 1 apart. So 2 is 1 away from 1, 3 is 1 away from 2, 4 is 1 away from 3, 5 is 1 away from 4, and 6 is 1 away from 5. So what this question is basically saying is identify all outputs of f of x and only plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So basically what we want here is we want to know what the output of this function is at 1. So that's f of 1. Plug 1 into that function. Also, plug 2 into that function. Also, plug 3 into that function. Also, plug in 4. Also, plug in 5. And lastly, plug in 6. And when we plug these numbers in, if we plug a 1 in, 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0, plus 5 is 5. Plug in 2. 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2, plus 5 is 7. Plug in 3. 3 squared is 9, minus 3 is 6, plus 5 is 11. Plug in 4. 4 squared is 16, minus 4 is 12, plus 5 is 17. Now, plug in 5. 5 squared is 25, minus 5 is 20, plus 5 is 25. And now plug in 6. 6 squared is 36, minus 6 is 30, plus 5 is 35. Okay? Now, don't want to freak you out too early, but just as a, I want to show you something interesting. Do you notice as we count up by ones, I want you to see what's happening to these answers. This is 5, this is 7. How, what's the difference? What's 7 minus 5, right? 7 minus 5 is 2, right? Here, the answer on 3 is 11. And what's 11 minus 7? 11 minus 7 is 4. For f of 4, 17 minus 11, that's 6. Look at this, 2, 4, 6. Isn't that interesting? That's meaningful, by the way. I'm not going to explain it to you. You won't learn, understand what this means until you get to calculus. But I just want to show you that this is happening. What's 25 minus 17? You guessed it. It's 8. And what's 35 minus 25? That's 10. The fact that, that the difference between the values is growing, is doubling up, there's a good reason for that, and it has to do with calculus. I just can't explain it right now. I just thought I'd point it out to you. All right, so look at this. So we have, the question says, identify all the outputs of the function on the interval from 1 to 6, inclusive, where the change in x is 1. We have identified all of them. And now, here's what you've got to understand, is that these are points on a graph. On this function, this function passes through the point 1, 5, 2, 7, 3, 11, 4, 17, 5, 25, 6, 35. And if you can identify all those outputs, then you're ready to do the next thing that we're going to learn. Okay, let's do one more example. All right, I've got another one for you here. Here's what it says. Identify all outputs of the function f of x is equal to 3x squared on the interval of x from 2 to 5 inclusive, where delta x, the change in x, is 0.5. Why don't you first make a list of all the numbers that we're going to include from 2 to 5? Go. All right, so we know that we're going to include 2 because it says, it, it says or equal to. So we know we're going to include 2. Then what is our x value going to change by? It's going to change by 0.5. So we're going to go up by 0.5. Well, what's 2 plus 0.5? 
That's 2.5. All right, we're going to keep going. What's 2.5 plus 0.5? Well, that's 3. How about 3 plus 0.5? That's 3.5. How about 3.5 plus 0.5? That's 4. 4 plus 0.5? That's 4.5. And what's 4.5 plus 0.5? That's 5. And 5 is at the top end of where we want to go. So we've got seven numbers here. 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, and 5. So this is seven numbers that we're going to use. So we want to identify what is f of 2, what is f of 2.5, what is f of 3, what is f of 3.5, what is f of 4, what's f of 4.5, and lastly, what is f of 5. To find all these, we need to plug these numbers into what f of x is, 3x squared. Now, a calculator would be really handy for this. Let's see here. Now, this is a place where we're probably going to use decimals instead of fractions, okay? But here's what I have, 3x squared. So when I, I want, well, I don't need it for this one. I'm going to plug in a 2. 2 squared, that's 4. 4 times 3, that's 12. But now I may want to use a calculator to do 2.5 squared. So I'm going to do 2.5 squared times 3. 2.5 squared times 3 is 18.75. So put 18.75 here. Now we're going to plug a 3 in. Well, 3 squared, that's 9. And 9 times 3 is 27. So put a 27 here. Now we'll put in 3.5. I'll use a calculator for that. 3.5 squared, and then times 3, that gives me 36.75, 36.75. All right, now I'm going to plug 4 in, and 4 squared, that's 16, 16 times 3, that's 48. Now I'm going to plug in 4.5, 4.5 squared, that's 20.25, then I'm going to multiply it by 3. That gives me 60.75. Lastly, we're going to plug the 5 in. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 3 is 75. And what that means is, so here's all of our outputs. We've identified all outputs of the function on the interval from 2 to 5, where the delta x, where the change in x is 0.5. And so what this means is these outputs with these inputs, that means that the graph of 3x squared passes through on the coordinate plane, passes through the point 212. It also passes through the point 2.5 and 18.75. It also passes through the point 3 and 27. It also passes through the point 3.5 comma 36.75. It also passes through the point 4 and 48 the point 4.5 and 60.75, and lastly, the point 5, 75. So all seven of these points are points on the graph of... So all these points are points on the graph of f of x equals 3x squared. Okay, this one will stretch you just a little bit, okay? You're going to need a calculator for it, but you don't necessarily, here's the, I'm going to show you that you don't necessarily need a calculator to be able to do a problem like this, but we're going to get a calculator anyways. So, it says identify all outputs of f of x is equal to e to the x power on the interval from 1 to 2 where the delta x is 0.25. So let's first think about what are all of the x values that we're going to use. Try to write them down. Go ahead and pause the video and try to write them down. Okay, so we know we're going to use 1 because we're starting at 1. Then our change in x is 0.25. So basically what we do is we just add the change in x to the previous value. So 1 plus 0.25 is 1.25. Then add 0.25 again, and we have 1.5. Then add 0.25 again, and we have 1.75. Add 0.25 again, and we have 2. And you'll see now that we have reached 
the maximum end of our inter interval. So we have five numbers here. So we're going to do, we're going to try and identify f of 1, then f of 1.25, then f of 1.5, then f of 1.75, and lastly, f of 2. Now here's the thing. With e to the x power, I know you are just dying to punch this into your calculator, but what I'm telling you is technically, especially in calculus, you don't have to punch it in at all. When we bring this down here, we'll do e, and we're plugging a 1 in, right? We're doing e to the first power. Well, we could just type in e to the first power, but a lot of times in math, kind of like with pi, we don't type, we don't actually put pi, like the, the number in, 3.14, we just, you know, make our answer something like 2 pi over 6, or it's not over 6, over 3, sorry, 2 pi over 3. And we don't calculate it out, we just leave it as 2 pi over 3. Well, we do the same thing with e a lot in math. e to the first power, well, anything to the first power is itself. And so the answer to this is just e, okay? All right, and then f of 1.25 would be e to the power of 1.25. And that's good enough. We're just going to leave it there. f of 1.5 is e to the 1.5 power. f of 1.75 is e to the 1.75 power. And then f of 2 is e squared, or e to the second power. Now that's fine for symbolic. But now let's say we want to actually graph it on graph paper. Well, now we need an actual number. We need a decimal number. So now we can plug it into the calculator. If I get my calculator here, I have to hit the button second and then LN. See, look, if I hit second here and then hit the LN button, you'll see over top of LN, it says e to the x power, right? So if I hit second and LN, it'll give me e to the power of, and now I can type in 1. So e to the first power, which is just e, is 2.7183. And I'm going to, to I'm going to go to four decimal points, because this, this is an irrational number. This will go on to eternity, okay? So I'm going to stop at four decimal places. So I'm going to do e to the 1.25 power. 1.25 gives me 3.4903. E to the 1.5 power. Oops. And I get 4.4817. E to the 1.75 power gives me 5.7546. And lastly, E squared gives me 7.3891. And so we know that this function is going to pass through the points 1 and 2.7183, 1.25 and 3.4903, 1.5 and 4.4817, 1.75 and 5.7546, and then the point 2 and 7.3891, okay? And so this is the first thing that I want you to learn how to do. We got a few videos for today, but you have to be able to, before you can do the other things that I want you to be able to do today, you have to be able to identify some x values based on an interval and a change in x, and you also have to be able to plug all those numbers into a function and give us the outputs, okay? That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.